Hey everybody, welcome back to Using Emacs. Uh, we're up to episode, I guess, 30-something. Um, I'm having some trouble coming up with uh, what to do next for these, um, mostly because I'm really comfortable in the way I'm working with Emacs right now, and um, I've kind of shown you most of the stuff that I do. Um, I want to become a little bit more familiar with some of the tools. I just, I, I keep going back and forth between the Git and using the command line for Git, and I want to just, um, be more comfortable with the subtleties of that before I show that and um, some people asked about an uh, e-list tutorial um, and I, I haven't done any real e-list in a long time so I really consider myself just a dabbler at this point um, but uh, but anyway but uh, yesterday I was just um, uh, just messing around on my computer doing a personal project um, and I had posted a, um, a computer science education policy blog post as um, that's the other thing that I talk about a lot, computer science education, in addition to these Emacs videos. And I decided to check out um, how many hits I had because I usually don't post, um, uh, do policy posts on a Saturday and I was just kind of curious if anybody was uh, was going there. Um, I don't have a big readership anyway, you know, it's pretty small, but I figured what the hell. And I noticed a huge explosion in the number of hits and it turns out that one of you out there decided to post a link to using Emacs over on Hacker News. Um, and then when I checked it, um, uh, we were in the top 10. So, you know, that was kind of cool. So whoever posted it up there, um, thanks, you got me a lot of hits. Um, but really, I'm hoping people are finding this useful and it seems like people are so that's wonderful and as always um, comments suggestions questions are always welcome uh, preferably um, you know, I like them on the blog so it's all in one place but you know wherever you put them that's all cool uh, so what I want to do today is um, just a little bit of a don't be afraid to explore and mess with Emacs um, and we're gonna look at a little bit of ELISP here and a little bit of the help system uh, but it's pretty small uh, so so as I said I'm working on a little personal project now and so I'm doing a little bit of coding that I haven't really done since last summer you know, during the school year, you don't have that much time to really dive in. And so when I'm doing more coding, I'm dealing with Windows. And so, you know, I, we've covered the basic, where am I here? Uh, let me just um, make this a little bit up there so the keys don't show anything. Okay. So we can, you know, we know we can do stuff like that. And, you know, I've shown this all before with window managers. Um, and you know that I use Ace Window. Uh, let's go to here. Let's actually go to the configuration file here. Um, and I use Ace Window in order to jump between windows and stuff. But uh, but one of the things that I'm finding that I want to do is let me just get back to a single window. Let me do three, and let me do this, and let me go to that'll be buffer two. This is buffer two, and this is buffer three, and this is buffer one, and um. What I what I find myself kind of wanting to do is it's easy enough to move around. I can go to you know buffer two or buffer one or window two or window one, and I'm comfortable with that and I like the workflow. Um, but what I sometimes want to do, and I of course can go, um, you know, I can go to two or I can go to one like that. Now of course if this was a project, I showed you. Um, projectile a few videos ago and with projectile that would make these buffer switches a little bit cleaner as well you know or I can just use you know the good old um, you know uh, eye buffer to do this which I also showed but um, I don't necessarily just want to change buffers what I want to do what I sometimes want to do is I was playing with tiling window managers and I decided that I didn't really like them but one of the things I liked is there was a feature that I could take a certain window like on this window I could swap it with buffer 2 so that way buffer 2 comes over here and buffer 1 goes over here so I can basically say move something to the big workspace and leave stuff in the small workspace and I was like well how can I do that um, and I wasn't you know, I, I wasn't able to come up with a um, you know, I, I couldn't come up with an obvious solution, and I said, well, let me look and see if Ace Windows does anything like this. So let's, I looked up uh, here, and it had some promising stuff. I could swap windows, um, and I could also select the previous window. Um, you know, so let's try these. Swapping windows sounds promising. Let me just click here because i got a whole bunch of stuff on my second screen. Um, so let's see if swapping windows works. So let's see if I'm over here. Uh, swapping windows was control X O M two, and that's not exactly the behavior I want because it swapped them, 
but it left me in the smaller window. And But here I noticed that select the previous window, um, so it's a control X, O, N, and that brings me back here. And that was kind of the behavior that, that, I, that I liked. Um, but that's too many keystrokes for something that I want to do reasonably regularly. So I'm like, well, how can I deal with this? Um, well, let me see if I can figure out how, um, you know, um, how Ace Windows, what Ace Windows is calling for here. Uh, so the first thing I went to was into the help system. So at Control H K uh, for a Control Help for a key. And actually, let me just do this again. Let me just bring up one window here, Control H, and K is for help on a key. So if it's K and Control X, well, that immediately goes into oh, it's calling Ace Windows. So that doesn't help me with the the rest of the arguments. But one of the nice things I can do here is I can go into here, I can just click on that. I could have just done it with the keyboard as well. And I actually have all the source code here. And I can poke around in here and I can see stuff like, um, you know, if I look around, you know, oh, wow. well, that looked promising. I just scrolled past something. That looked, ah, the dispatch list. Delete window, swap window, M, M. This looks like these guys here. So it looks like when I do N, it's calling AW flip window. And when I call M, it's calling AW swap window. So that seems pretty cool. That seems to be what I want to do here. So let's actually try that. Let's go to X2 and X3, and let's go to one, two, three, and let's do control X, AW, well, actually I can't run it in this way, I'll, so I'll come, because it's not an interactive function. Um, but those are the commands that I want to do. So if I can combine both of those into one little ELISP function, that looks pretty good. But then how do I write an ELISP function? Well, I know because of um, learning my configuration and stuff, I know the basics. Let me just go to buffer one. You know, I can do, you know, this is a, the plus function. I showed this in an early video. Um, but you can also define functions with a certain form. And another nice thing about Emacs is I can have control H and then I for info, and this is the info page, and I've been using this before. When you first bring it up, it'll probably bring you this here. And these are the info pages of the manuals for Emacs and all the stuff you have installed. And you can find here the ELISP reference manual or the intro to Emacs list. And I can just hit enter on that and it comes into here. I can hit U to go up a level. I can look at my ELISP reference, U to go up a level. And this is actually a really good book. I, I remember reading that the author of this passed away recently. Um, but this is what I learned, you know, which is unfortunate, but you know, left something, he left something really enduring here. This is how I learned ELISP originally. It's just been so many years that I consider myself kind of a hack now. But you can find, um, if you go through this sequentially, it's really, it's a book to learn it. It's not a reference manual. And you can go through this and you can learn about setting up functions, etc. But what I learned is I can just write a function saying defund, and I can even look um, at the samples um, in the ELIST manual, or rather in the, in, in, well, even if I go to the ACE code, let me see if I buffer it still, ACE window L, um, you know, oh, defund, the name, then the parameters, so if you know a little scheme or lisp, and then a little string there um, for the documentation string. So I'm going to call something like, uh, let's call this my swap and no parameters and uh, swap windows leave focus in original window. And if I want this to be callable from meta X as opposed to just from within, uh, you know, within ELIS program, I have to make this interactive. Um, and then I can just do the two things I want to do, a swap window and then a w flip window. And that's my function, so control x e to run it. So let's see if this works. So let's go control x2, control x3, let's go to 1, well that is buffer 1, 2, let's go to 1. And I can just type in escape x my swap, and I want to swap that with let's say 3, 
and it actually worked. Notice that it swapped this one and this one, but my cursor stayed up there. I, I still had focus up there. So this is exactly what I wanted, um, which is pretty cool. And it just took a little experimenting with a little e-lisp, and it, it wasn't that hard. And yeah, I had to look at that built-in book that comes with Emacs, so you don't have to go buy anything. Um, but it was pretty cool, pretty easy. Um, and what I found is another nice advantage of this is let's go to one window. Let's go to two, and let's do... Um, Let's shrink that window, and let's make this back to one. Um, what did I call this again? My swap. Um, if I just do Control X O, I can't do that buffer swap because Control X O just does goes to the other window unless you have three windows. If I had three windows, then I could have done the swap. So let me get back to where I was. Shrink window. So if I do my swap here, um, notice it does the swap, but it doesn't ask. That's exactly what I wanted. So this is the behavior that I wanted for all of this. Um, and what I actually did is I came over here, and in my actual, this is my my init, my startup code, um, I had already put this in under some little e -lisp. I called it Z slash swap windows. And it's exactly what we typed in before, but this basically does the swapping for me. And I'm not sure about the keystroke that I'll use for, for now, but so right now I just put this on my personal e -map, uh, personal key map rather, a control one W for swap windows or something like that. Um, so, you know, playing with ELISP, learning a little bit, you don't have to really know a lot. I, there's no if statements, no loops. It's just a way of combining a couple of functions, um, but I'm able to get the functionality I want. And I also realized that that's a really cool thing about Emacs is, you know, I can make it do or you can make it do what you want it to do really easily just by exploring and playing a little bit. The biggest danger is falling into the rabbit hole of just learning more and more and more and never getting out of this and just keep modifying and playing with your tools rather than doing the work you want to get done. Um, but I, I don't really know. I mean, I guess other editors have that ability as well if you learn to customize them. Um, but, you know, Emacs does it really well. Really cool, uh, really cool to be able to do it so easily. Um, you know, I woke up this morning and I had a problem that I wanted to solve. And in short order, I had a solution. It was in my config file, and I'm good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this one. As uh, usual, leave comments, leave questions, and that's it. And we'll see you next time.